critters you want and critters you don't. Animals are great energy shifters, and that I do know for a fact, along with everything else. Having cared for just about every animal in the whole animal kingdom all at the same time for many years, it did get kind of mental after a while, especially with the parrots, who had a penchant for ear-splitting screams during business calls, making me sound like some creepy thug who'd tied up a couple of panicking old ladies and just suddenly had the urge to set up a job interview. With all their bouncing, pouncing, squawking, whistling, twittering, screeching, and underneath the watery surface glug glug glugging, the beasts you choose to bring into your world are not only great at kicking the crap out of stale energy, but being earth-attached, they are experts at sucking bad energy out of you, too. In which case, be aware, because they do this shit without a judgmental moment. And personally, I know what's gone on in some homes during breakups and stressful events like that can end up creating some pretty bad stuff in the beasts and birds, only because they're happy to take the pressure off you when and if they can. So make sure you love them up, even when they poop outside their cages, cack up bits of grass on the kitchen floor, or start humping the legs of the dinner guests. <laughs> Meanwhile, while many animals are super aware cosmic bridge gaps evolving, I believe, towards our advanced human slobbishness, my friend's dog Emma is, I believe, a highly intelligent human being dressed up in a big old woolly suit that makes her look like a giant Sasquatch. They are not aware of or don't care about the stuff that flies off, scatters around, or comes out of them. Well, actually, that's not entirely true, but that's a whole other universe to explore like a dolphin's stare. But for practical purposes, since dogs can't handle dustpans, well, Emma might be able to, but she's keeping that up her woolly sleeve for the time being, it's up to us humans to not only take care of the obvious, but also the minuscule stuff that makes people sneeze the tea out of their nostrils when they plump down on that microbe and dander soup you call a sofa. <laughs> on that note... Did you realize that inside the average pillow, after about three months, there's about 200 bazillion jillion mites with their accompanying bazillion jillion mite shites, all adding up to about one third of your pillow's weight? Gross. And before you start smashing my face against the laptop, Mr. or Miss Smarty Google Wiki Pants, I can see that I might have got a couple of those figures wrong. I pre-warned you about my being a slob, and that goes for figures too. But you get the gist. Give or take a jillion, that's a hell of a lot of extra yuck you just don't need to be dreaming on. What kind of nocturnal energy those little bastards are sending out to you in your sleep is anyone's guess. But it certainly can't be super terrific. And there are ways of making sure, even if you don't chuck your pillows out every three months or so, that the buggers aren't overstaying their welcome for an opportunity to mess with your energy. While it doesn't do any good to spend your time overly concerned about the various micro-critters making up your universe, and that shit will drive you crazy. Just like the seeds on the floor and the hairs in the coffee cups and the poopy smell from the cat box, the critters you don't see when running rampant can truly upset your psyche with their little micropods of energy gluck. So you gotta think about this stuff a little bit, but not a whole lot. So don't go all goofy on yourself. By the way, if you've checked the gas knobs on the stove 15 times in the last five minutes, or blinked 27 times every time you read the word poop, you might just want to get yourself some serious professional help before you start messing with the microbes too much. As the journey to being a spiritual slob is about discovery, you may have noticed by now that I don't spend a whole lot of time spelling things out for you like you're some mother-tossing dummy. Us slobs have intelligence, it's just that we're often too busy or too stubborn or oblivious or paranoid to truly engage in our immediate surroundings. And of course, that shit's about to change. So once you start examining your world, it will become obvious to you that that spack on the inner roof of the closed-in cat box did not come with the whole assembly when you bought it, that that dog of yours who hasn't been washed for four months is kind of unhappy and fucking stinks, and that month's old crusty stuff on the parrot's perch is not really supposed to be there, and such like. If you use your eyes and your mind and your senses and search up and down and all around, just like one of those squiggly images that looks at first like somebody threw up their spaghetti on a board, but is actually a picture of Jesus, it will all become perfectly clear. <laughs>